Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be looking at how to create simple geospatial heat maps in Python. And for this, we're going to be using two popular Python libraries. The first is Plotly Express, and we'll be looking at the map box feature. And the second is a popular Folium library, which makes it easy to generate maps in Python. We're going to be using some well log data that's been acquired along the Norwegian continental shelf. And within that data set, we're going to be looking at acoustic compressional slowness and how it varies across that region. So geospatial heat maps allow us to visualize trends in our data. So we can look at variations across the region as well as within smaller areas of that region. And we can also use it to identify outliers in measurements. So perhaps we've got a series of sensor measurements across an area and maybe one of them is faulty, which gives an unusually high or low reading and we'll be able to identify that in the geospatial heat map. So let's go over to our Jupyter Notebook and see how we can create some interactive geospatial heat maps. So the first thing that we're going to do is import the libraries we're going to be using. So we're going to need pandas, and that is imported as PD, and that will be used to load our data. Then we're going to use two different visualization libraries for viewing our data on maps. First is Plotly Express, and the second is Folium. Now these libraries have their own advantages and disadvantages and it's mainly down to a personal preference which one you prefer to use. So I'll show both ways so that you have an understanding of how to create the geospatial heat map. So once these have been uh, imported, we can then load the data. And we're just going to load the data from the Zeek Enforced 2020 machine learning competition. And it's basically a summarized version of the acoustic compressional or DTC curve across all of the wells within the data set and we're going to map these values across that Norwegian continental shelf. So when we run this, we can see that we've got our well name, our DTC measurement, which is what we're interested, but we also have our latitude and longitude positions, and this will allow us to plot where our data is originating from. And then we've got some other columns in here if we need them, temperature, water depth, and completion year, and we'll use these as labels within our Plotly Express and Folium map. So now that we've got that data loaded in, we can then go on to creating a heat map within Plotly Express, and this is a very simple way to do it, and we just call upon fig is equal to px dot density map box and then we pass in our data frame and then we need to pass in a few variables so our position data which is our latitude so latitude and we'll pass in our longitude longitude and then we pass in the variable that we're wanting to map which is z and we'll set this to dtc so this is what we're going to show across the, the region and then we're going to set the radius to 20 and we also need to center our map and where it's going to be located when we're going to set this over the Norwegian continental shelf or basically the North Sea uh, region and then we'll zoom in. So we need to pass in our dictionary and we need to pass in lat is equal to. So we're going to call upon our latitude and we'll take the mean value of that and we should have a capital L for latitude. And then we're going to take the same for our longitude and we'll set that to df.long longitude. And we'll take the mean value of that so that we've got a center point for our map. We'll set the zoom level equal to four so we can change this if we want to be a little bit more zoomed in. And we'll also set the map box style equal to open street map. So it's a free map, so we can use that uh, without having to pay for certain services to get such as, uh, to get ordinary survey maps or much more detailed maps. And then we can set the height of it is equal to 900, so that we're setting the height of the figure. And then we call upon fig dot show, and when we run that, we get back the following heat map. So we can zoom in and already you can see that when we hover over this, we get our latitude and longitude values as well as our DTC value. And if we zoom in, we can see our radius uh, taking effect here. So we can go back up and change that to, let's say 60. However, when you do that, you'll see that you get less details. So it's just a case of picking the most optimal number within here. So 20 seems fine. 
we can see a little bit more detail. We've got two separations here in our DTC values, so it's slightly slower. And we also have our color bar on the right hand side just to help us. The great thing about using Plotly Express is that these values are automatically added to our tooltip. However, as you'll see with Folium, we need to add these manually. So let's have a look at our Folium map and the code is slightly different. So we need to create our map object. So we need to call upon Folium dot map and this is our basic map so we set the location and we'll set that equal to equal to these values here so we'll just steal this and put it into a list and we just take off the first two parts of that so so that we've just got the df and then we pass in the zoom and we'll set this one equal to six and we'll add the control scale is equal to true. So we want to be able to control it. So we can then call up on map. And when we do that, zoom start. So I just missed a start off of that uh, so that when we start the map, it starts at the zoom level of six. So now we've got our basic map. Now we need to apply the values onto our map. So we need map underscore values, and we'll say df and what we're wanting. And we're just converting our data frame objects into basically lists, latitude and longitude. And what value we want out is DTC. So this is the data that we're going to put onto our map. So we take that space out. And then data is equal to map values dot to list so we're just converting everything into a list and before we run this i need to list and i need to add in values so that we're extracting the values from our data frame so now when we call upon data we then get our list of the values for our latitude and longitude for each of the wells so the next step is to then apply that and we'll say hm which is short for heat map and we'll pass it in our data and then we set the min opacity is equal to 0 0.05, so 5% minimum opacity, max opacity, and we'll set that equal to 0 0.9. And we'll set the radius equal to 25. And then we call upon one extra bit, and that is add to M. So we'll add that onto our map object. And then we just call upon M, which is our map. So when we do that, we now get the heat map. It's slightly better colors than uh, Plotly Express, but they can easily be changed. And we get the similar patterns as well. So we can see the higher values are our slower intervals, so our higher values of DTC. And then the lighter colors, the blues and the greens, are faster intervals. So once we've done that, we would need to start adding some tooltips onto the Folia map. And you can find that in my earlier video looking at GeoJSON data and how we add those labels. So there we have it. We've seen how to use two different plotting libraries to view spatial variation within well log measurements across an area. And we've done that using Plotly Express and also Folium. So you'll see that Folium takes a little bit less code in one sense compared to our density map box. So you can see that the two functions are equivalent. We've got, uh, we're setting the latitude and longitudes, the center point and the zoom level, and then we're passing in our data and it's automatically doing the interpolation between the points. Whereas Folium, we need to create our base map and then we add on to that map, our heat, our heat map, which then allows us to view those values. So I'll leave the next video up here if you're interested in applying Python to other geoscience applications. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content from this channel, click on that subscribe button and ding that notification bell. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.